everyone and welcome to Rule Breaker. Today we're going to have a quick look at how to play as the Emirates of Hakan in Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. These line dudes are kind of like Space Lannisters. They uh, they like money, they're proud, they are um, they try to make friends with people as long as it suits them. Um, uh, let's take a close look at what you get when you start the game. Okay, so your starting technology is going to be uh, anti-mass deflectors and Sarween tools, two technologies, that's pretty good, a blue and a yellow. anti mass Deflectors allows you to move into and through asteroid fields and when other players' units use space cannon against your units apply a minus one to the result of each die roll. And Sarween tools, when one or more of your units use production, reduce the combined cost of the produced units by one. So that's like a one uh, resource discount when you produce stuff. And you're also going to get the starting units, it's two carriers which is really nice. Um, you're going to get a cruiser for a bit of speed. You're going to get two fighters, the smallest ships in the game. You're going to get um, four infantry, which are these um, flag tokens here. They're your um, ground forces. And of course, a space dock, just like everybody else. Alright, this is your starting system. It's um, unusual for the game in that it has three planets got these three here. One is a 2-0, one is a 1-1, one, one, and the other is a 0-1. Just remind you that the yellow figures here are your production um, and resource values, and the blue is your political influence. Uh, so even though you've got three planets, you don't really have a lot going there. Um, something to be aware of, which is a little bit of a disadvantage, is that your space dock uh, it should definitely go onto this planet at the start of the game to give you the most production capacity. Um, even when you do pick the best planet though, you're only going to be able to build four units maximum. And that's uh, any units, that's like it could be just four infantry and that's all you can do. Um, it can be four ships or a combination of them. Um, but just remember that at the start of the game the maximum amount of uh, pieces of plastic, like units that you can build, is going to be four. You do start with four infantry. Um, you're probably going to want to carry them along with one of your carriers. Um, to go and explore and conquer new planets. Um, your starting units looks like this when you start the game. And um, yeah, it seems like a lot at the start, but once you actually, you know, go out and explore a bit of space, you're either going to be leaving very few um, things behind to defend, or you're going to uh, not be expanding very fast. So you're probably going to want to use this space dock, even though you don't have a lot of uh, production capacity. Let's take a closer look at your race sheet here. Um, all of your units are taking up most of the space here, um, but the stuff that we're going to focus on is here um, for your race specifically. Let's take a look. You've actually got three abilities here. Master of Trade, which is you do not have to spend a command token to resolve the secondary ability of the trade strategy card. Let's take a quick look at that. That's this guy here. The secondary ability on trade is spend a token from your strategy pool to replenish your commodities, which leads us to this section of your race sheet here, your commodities. You may notice this big number here, six, that is by far the most in the game. So basically anytime anybody picks trade, whether it's you or somebody else, you're gonna have the opportunity to fill that up straight away to six, like so. Which is gonna make you really popular at the table for trading. People are gonna to wanna to do deals with you to turn these, uh, these commodities into trade goods, which can be used for resources. So uh, you're going to be all about making friends. That's uh, that's what that's all about. The second uh, ability here is you can negotiate transactions with players who are not your neighbor. Uh, let's have a look at how that normally works. All right, let's say that this is a normal game and um, you're not the Emirates of Hakan. Um, let's say you're this red player here. Uh, normally, you cannot trade with somebody who is not in direct contact with you. These are not neighbors, even though they're probably the nearest players on the board. However, if somebody had a ship adjacent to um, your space, then you would be neighbors and you'd be able to trade, be able to, do, to exchange trade goods. Um, what the Hakan let you do, let's say you're the yellow player, is in this situation, even though you're not neighbors directly, you can do trading. That's what that special ability is. So it's quite useful, especially at the very start of the game when nobody is neighbors, you're gonna be able to deal with anybody. And your last ability here is Arbiters. When you are negotiating a transaction, action cards can be exchanged as part of that transaction. So there you go, you've got another thing to bargain with. 
um, you can get or you can give action cards instead of just giving uh, commodities and trade goods around you have a little bit more uh, bargaining power which is pretty interesting also the Hakan's uh, flagship the Wrath of Kanara flagship is uh, this unit here it's kind of cool uh, big piece of plastic that you get um, this costs 8 to put in it has 2 dice that hit on a 7 it has capacity of 3 and a standard move of 1 um, its special ability is after you roll a die during a space combat in this system you may spend a trade good to apply plus one to the result um, and it has sustained damage and sustained damage means that you can take a hit put your ship like this upside down and it's not destroyed That's, which is risky but uh, it's useful sometimes um, what makes this one so good is that you're the trade guy you tr get lots of trade goods hopefully um, if you've got cooperative players at the table um, so having a lot of trade goods means applying lots of plus ones to the result of uh, your combat damage which is pretty powerful also uh, going along with the trade uh, theme is the promissory note that your uh, emirates are going to have it's a uh, trade convoys place this card face up in your play area while this card is in your play area you may negotiate transactions with players who are not your neighbor if you activate a system that contains one or more of the hakan players units return this card to the hakan player so as the Hakan, you're going to be giving this to somebody, they're going to be playing it out in front of themselves, meaning that they essentially get your uh, special ability to trade with anybody, whether they're neighbors or not. Um, this one is really, um, it's interesting in a lot of ways in that it doesn't directly damage you. It makes your bargaining power maybe a little bit less valuable, but it doesn't really take anything away from you tangibly. Um, it just offers something quite attractive to somebody who you want to get on your side. It's a really interesting and um, promissory note. Uh, you also get two race techs just like everybody else. There's the quantum data hub node and the production biomes. Let's take a closer look at these. Uh, the quantum data hub node, at the end of the strategy phase you may spend one token from your strategy pool and give another player three of your trade goods. If you do, give one of your strategy cards to that player and take one of his strategy cards. Um, it costs three yellow uh, technology prerequisites though, um, which is a pretty big cost. Um, what this essentially lets you do is if you really, really, really want a particular strategy card, uh, you can get it and nobody can stop you. As far as I know, there's only a couple action cards that can do anything about it, but it's very rare. Um, this is going to come in very handy at the end of the game when you want initiative to get the victory the very end. Maybe you want Imperial, maybe you want Initiative. Um, one way or another, this is a really interesting way of, of securing that. Um, it is quite expensive. If you're if you're behind in the game and you see yourself having trouble catching up, this is not going to be the one that's uh, going to gonna make everything better, I don't think. This is a real kind of uh, finish the game off kind of uh, strategy, uh, technology card. Whereas Production biomes is a bit more of an all-rounder that you should probably try and get in uh, most games. Um, it has the action, exhaust this card and spend one token from your strategy pool to gain four trade goods and choose one other player, that player gains two trade goods. So even if you're locked out of your um, trading deals with other players, this is a way to get lots of these. And uh, in conjunction with your flagship, with its uh, plus one ability, this can be it's going to be pretty useful. Take Mechatol Rex and do other really cool uh, combat stuff. And that's how they work. Um, a couple of tips. Again, just to, with the caveat that uh, I'm not the greatest Twilight Imperium player in the world. I love the game, uh, but my win percentage is pretty low. So take anything, uh, any advice I give you with a grain of salt. I would say um, don't be afraid to take trade. Um, it's what your guys do. If nobody else is taking it to block you out, take it yourself. Um, it might cost you a lot of strategy tokens to do things like technology and, and uh, all that sort of stuff. But um, your thing is trade goods and you want to be doing that. Um, trade early with your special power. You're not having to be a neighbor. Do Open the field to everybody. Fill up your commodities. Try and get rid of them all. Trade them into trade goods. Uh, get yourself a bit of a head start. Another thing I would say is uh, don't stockpile too many trade goods. If you have them, spend a few of them. Uh, you don't want to look like you're this uh, all-powerful super bank who 
it just has too much money if you're spending them regularly it's not going to seem like you're you're doing that and people will be more willing to trade with you which is really key to success as these guys um the hakan can get kind of locked out by a table that just doesn't want to trade with them that can be quite frustrating and difficult so make good offers don't be too stingy with what you're doing and above all uh just remember your backups your um, production biomes to get those four trade goods and you know make friends with people they're going to want that two trade goods if you've got this out too uh, you've got a lot of sway at the table so don't be afraid to uh, do some deals uh, i hope you find this useful and um enjoy your game of twilight imperium as the emirates of hakan uh, it's been rule breaker and thank you very much Thank you.